The last few times I've been hammock camping, I was thinking to myself, you know what? My, my setup's really damn good, but it's not quite perfect for me yet. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, do some do some modifications today. And uh, maybe these might be some of the things that you wanna do, or if you're a first time uh, hammock camper, uh, some things that you might find that'll help you out uh, with make your setup easier or uh, make it more adjustable or whatever. But um, we're gonna open up this bag here. We're gonna pull everything out and we're gonna get into it. So don't you go away. Sorry guys, the first thing we're gonna be working on is this brand new Pariah Sanctuary Sil Nylon Tarp. Uh, basically what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna add some, um, some shock cord to the tie outs. Now, for those of you who have experience with Sil Nylon Tarps, uh, they do tend to stretch uh, a little bit and they also tend to uh, blow around uh, when the trees are moving around or your tie outs and wind's blowing out from under it. Uh, they tend to uh, start sagging a little bit and uh, not be as tight as they originally were. So we're gonna add this shock cord to the tie outs. It's a little tip I picked up on uh, Shug's channel. Um, he is the information hub of the hammock camping. So for those of you who don't know this guy, you should really go check him out. Uh, Shug Marie, I believe it's called, but uh, people just call him Shug. I'll go ahead and stick his link in the description below so you can find out, uh, find his channel to his setup of this. Um, but uh, this is uh, the tarp we're gonna start off with. First project, right here. Then uh, I like to hang on my Kamek Roo, although I do have another one, uh, another hammock coming from Hemlock Mountain Outdoors. <coughs> that is gonna be my, uh, my new hammock. And this one I'm gonna pass on to my son, which is a awesome hammock, probably the most comfortable hammock I've ever been in. Um, but uh, we are gonna pimp this guy out a little bit today. We are gonna add some whoopee slings to it. We're gonna, I'll show you how to install these. Uh, whoopee slings are gonna be going on to the hammock. Um, and as, as the suspension, uh, it's gonna make it more uh, more adjustable. Um, I'm still waiting for my for my uh, nylon straps to come in, but we'll get this far and we'll still be able to test it out with the old straps that this came in with. There's project number two. I have this piece of power cord here. We're gonna be adding this to the hammock as well, um, just to keep a, uh, a ridge line going across the top. That's gonna be pretty cool. Uh, the only thing is, um, Power cord is probably not your best choice for it as, as it does stretch considerably. Uh, but we're gonna be putting this in just to get ourselves a baseline. Uh, once this is in, we will be changing to something non-stretch eventually, but uh, we'll show you how to do that as well. And one of the major things that I have found uh, with, with, um, with my hammock is it has no storage in it besides the little pouch that it comes with. So I, Got onto the internet and I checked out this site called Dutchware. And it's a hammock place, does all kinds of hammock stuff. And they have this thing here, it's called a peak loft. So we're gonna go ahead and attach this to the hammock. I'll show you how that's done as well. Um, it's got a few pretty cool clips, but we'll get into that when, when the time comes. But first, this is the Pariah Sanctuary Hex Cut Tarp. It's uh, 12 by 10 feet, weighs in at 16.5 ounces. And it's got six guile points and uh, and cat cuts, whatever the hell that is. Anyway, point is, this is what we got. When you pick up one of these tarps, you're gonna get six tie outs that have these little plastic doohickeys on the bottom. I'll probably just get rid of that and just tie my own uh, taut line hitches. They give you six of these uh, aluminum stakes. Um, I find these work okay. Uh, I've bent a couple of them, but these ones seem to be a little sturdy. But uh, who knows how well they're going to hold up. This one seems to have a bend in it already. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. You got, you got your tent, your uh, your six stakes. It makes it easier to carry these super light things instead of uh, spending your time carving them. But uh, if you're into that, do whatever you want. That's why it's uh, your camping kit. You get a nice super lightweight pouch to carry all this in. And you get your other, your other bag here, your other um, stuff sack. You can put all your stuff inside there. Whole package fits in there quite nicely with some extra room because this tarp rolls up to, to be almost non-existent. And uh, the nice thing is it's uh, uh, 15 ounces, so it comes in even under a pound, I believe. Let me just verify that. 
it is 16.5 ounces so it is a pound a little tiny bit over a pound all right so this is the end that we would be attaching to the tarp uh it's very simple very simple thing to do uh you know i like to tie bowlines lines and just loop it through and that's it um uh, but um you can do lark's heads you can do whatever whatever kind of thing you want to do so i'm just going to go ahead and uh open all these guys up tie a uh, bow line in the end just to make sure that we have a a nice loop to work with and attach them all to the ends and then we'll be in business so there's our first one right there that'll do just fine so there's one I'll do that one more time so grab it grab it like you're holding a cigarette between your two fingers pinch it flip it over you create your loop and then all the rules apply you know the rabbit runs around the tree back into the hole then you pull the whole thing tight that's it all right I'll show so originally I was gonna use the good old Groman number three uh, to chop up this shock cord but luckily uh, this uh, shock cord that I picked up on Amazon has a uh, has a little rope cutter in there so we'll just go ahead and use that so the plan is we'll measure out um, I think 10 inches should be enough. We'll measure out 10 inches and we're going to cut them off on this little shock cord cutter. And uh, when we have six of them, we should be ready to go. Getting a little closer so you can see the contrast here. We got our, um, our bow on knot here. That's where we're going to end up attaching it through, running it through, and attaching it to our tie outs. Now we want to come down about a foot and then we're going to tie a clove hitch, which is super simple. Two loops now you want to have both the loops in the end you'll see this one goes over uh, this one goes under this one goes over and you want to have both these little these little uh, tag ends here coming out in the middle after so we're going to take this guy and we're going to pass him under so hopefully you'll be able to see this here so you see this guy's got a loop under it and this guy's got a loop over it so no matter what which way you pull it now it's going to be right in the center basically what we're going to do is we're going to take this little guy here we're going to pass him through and slowly start to tighten this thing up all right oops let's go get that right up close to the end there There we go. So we got our little clove hitch on there. So this is gonna pull nice and tight. So just, we'll just recap from where we are. Bowling knot at the end. I don't know, say eight, 10 inches from the end. We've attached our first, first line here with a clove hitch. If you can see that here. I know it's tiny, it's hard to see, but there you go. So basically what we'll do now, is we're gonna pop out some of this so we'll take we'll take our our shock cord now basically what we'll do is we'll stretch this back out again by one so we'll give it like I don't know that much space see that so this way if your tarp is gonna be wiggling around or whatever it is you're gonna have a good section or good amount of of play there where this is always gonna stay nice and tight and snug so Basically what we'll do is tie another clove hitch on this end. Pass this guy over that guy. So they're both popping through the center. And then we'll tie this thing here. Wiggle this up just a little bit. So there you have it guys, you see this, it's going to be nice and loose and when you set up your tarp, you're basically going to peg it down and pull it tight as it is. 
See how we got the both ends? One's knotted here, one's knotted up at the top. So now, when the wind blows and your trees move around, it always keeps tension. There's always some kind of tension on there. Instead of your instead of your line being tight like this in the tree and then all of a sudden going Wah, like that, that's no good. It's no good for anybody, right? But this guy, now it's going to stay nice and snug all the time. And uh, you don't have to only do this to your hammock tarps. You can do this to any tarp you want. And that'll help keep tension on that tarp all the time. So we're going to go ahead and do that to all of our, all of our tie outs. And... Um, and then we'll go from there. And then we'll attach them to the uh, the tarp themselves. All right. So once you've got your all your bits and pieces on there, you can do this before or after. It's entirely up to you. Just melt those ends. Get rid of all those little frayed ends on there. You don't want them to uh, to keep on growing and coming apart on you and causing you problems later on. And also, that little, whew, that little melted hard bit at the end will help your, uh, make sure that your line doesn't slip off there. So, there we go. We'll go ahead, take care of that step too, and uh, we'll be back shortly. And uh, when we're all done, and we'll start attaching these to the, to the uh, tarp. All right, so now that we got all of our guy lines set up, we can just uh, go ahead and attach them uh, to all these tie-out points. So again, here's our bowline knot. We're gonna pass it through the loop. And then everything goes through the bowline again. Just because I'm a little bit anal, I like to make sure everything is, try to make sure everything is centered. And then we can just roll this back up onto the tarp. So once it's hang, hung up, we'll pull this all the way straight. And when the wind blows, it'll always keep tension on that line instead of it getting, getting loose. So once one's back on, we're just going to wind it right back up again. We'll keep about that much. And then we'll just wind this back up and this way all of our guy lines will stay nice and neat and they won't get all tangled up so there's one done all right so we're all done we're just going to go ahead and pack this guy away pegs tarp tie outs everything's in there and there's still Still more room for cordage if you wanted to put something in there. There you go. We've pimped our, our pariah, our pariah sanctuary uh, silt tarp. So let's move on to the uh, to the hammock now. All right. Now we're moving on to the roof. Uh, this guy fills into a nice uh, a nice little um, you know nice little uh, pouch that's attached to the hammock. Um, Weight-wise, the, the new roofs are lighter than the older roofs. I can't remember the weight of this guy anymore, and I can't find the information for it. But uh, the stuff sack that it comes with is pretty nice. It's got a, a, double, um, a double stuff sack, so on the inside, there's actually a drawstring. Once you tie it all down, it'll squeeze it in, and then you can pack in everything else. But uh, I tend to put a couple of extra things in there, like a, um, like a ridge line or whatever it is I want to use. And it works out just fine for me. But... On the very ends, it has one of these, uh, you know, this continuous loop uh, at the end and it attached to a carabiner and you basically click it up onto a daisy chain, uh, daisy chain straps, which works just fine. Um, but I do want to uh, uh, remove this continuous loop and we are going to attach our whoopee string slings directly to it. Um, now I've had the whoopee slings on one time before. I found I got a kind of got an awkward hang. Um, because I only pass it through one time. I'm going to see if I can pass it through twice and see if that makes a difference. Uh, I'm not sure if it will or not, but uh, maybe it will. Okay, who knows? So uh, we're going to give it a try. All right, so to get started, the first thing we're going to need is a tiny little bit of cordage. Nothing too long, nothing crazy. Something about, uh, I don't know, maybe six inches long, eight inches long. Just cut yourself off a nice little piece of that. Get all this out of the way. And then we should be good to go. 
So basically what we'll do is we're going to remove this carabiner. So we'll get this guy off. Put this guy over here for later. And here's our continuous loop. Now, we're going to want to take this thing off, but we don't want to have to go fishing through the hole later. So basically what I'm going to do is we're going to take, take our whoopee sling at the fixed loop because we're going to use this loop to attach to the to the uh, to the hammock, we'll put these guys together and just tie a quick a quick overhand knot just to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. We don't want to lose it, so do it twice. Uh, I've done this once before, and I only did one loop, and I was halfway through, and it fell off, and I lost everything. So basically, we'll pull this guy through. There's our other end. There's our whoopee sling and we're in business so so basically once you've got your gathered end here you want to find your inside of your hammock or the outside of your hammock and if you got to be sure follow one of the sides all the way around until you get to the pocket of course the pockets on the other side so we'll follow it along this side And here it is. So basically this would hang on the outside of the hammock and your pieces will be in here. So this is the way, the way your hammock will be lying. And we want to make sure that we get this in there nice and comfortable. So we'll have very little seam, nothing scratching on you. Now, some people, they will take this in here and they'll pass this again a second time. Um, I really don't know if that's any good or bad or, or what it is, but, uh, I think we could try it just to see, see if we can get this through. It may take me some, may take me some time, but we'll see. I'll fight this through and I'll get back to you in a minute when we get it through the second time, see if it makes any, any, uh, any real difference. All right. So we got it. It's gone through once. So you can see we've gone in. Went around once, wrapped it, and went around a second time. So basically what we're going to do now is we're going to pass all of this through the, the uh, permanent loop. There we go. And we're going to snug this down. Now, I don't know if that's going to make that much of a difference, but I can see already now the hammock is more, it seems to be more... Um, more uh, centered together the way I think it should be and it's uh, it's more centered on the on the pole on the um... so I don't know if passing it through a second time is really gonna make all that much of a difference but it seems that the uh, once you pull it tight everything kind of lines up nice and evenly uh, up until that spot and that'll hook on there uh, pretty easily and then we have our our, our end with the bead on it, which is our adjustable end, and that's going to work out just fine. So that's one end done. Let's get down to the other end and uh, get that taken care of. So once again, pass everything through your fixed loop. There we go. So once you got everything through there, you want to tighten everything up good. Make sure it's tight. Make sure your, your gathered end is hanging on the right end. And that's how it's going to lay. So we're looking pretty good here. Sorry guys, now that we have our, uh, our whoopee slings attached, we're just going to want to reattach our, uh, our um, carabiners. There's one on the one end. And here's one on the other end. You always find your adjustable loop. is the one that has the bead on it. Sometimes they have like a little ring, but once these guys are all clicked on, you're ready to go. All right, guys. So here we are. We're going to go ahead and put our, uh, our ridge line on our hammock. Uh, this ridge line is, um, is made out of paracord. Paracord is not your best choice. Yeah, it does stretch quite a bit, but it's going to be uh, nice and strong. And uh, until I can find a better replacement, this is what we're going to use. Um, so, 
basically what you want to do uh, after searching on hammockhangers.net, talking to a few guys on forums, seeing some videos on YouTube, uh, a lot of guys say the uh, the best starting point is around 83%. So basically what you want to do is get out some kind of measuring tool, measure the length of your hammock, find out how long it is from end to end of the fabric. Mine is 10 feet. So what I want to do is I want to find out what 10 feet, uh, 10 feet uh, what 83% of 10 feet is. So 120 inches uh, divided by 83%, blah, 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 whatever it is. Answer comes out to 99.6. Now, I prefer a deeper hammock, a deeper hang than, uh, than a shallow hang. So uh, I'm gonna do mine at 98. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this guy in here, we're gonna measure out 48 inches. I'm gonna pull it nice and tight, 48 inches. Pinch that off, 48, 48 is 96, pinch that off, and then I'm going to need two more inches. So there's our two inches, there's our spot right here. Now what I'm going to do, this is our starting point, so we're a little bit less than, a little bit less than 83%, so I'm just going to put a little black mark on there. There we go, see? We got our spot. Now we can ditch this thing. Put that over there in the corner. We don't have to worry about that no more. So, basically what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna take our one end of our hammock and of our whoopee sling. Uh, we're gonna have to take these uh, carabiners off again. So. One side, I'm gonna slide on. I just tied a little bowling knot again on the end. Such a handy knot. If you don't know how to tie one of these, you gotta get on that. So, we'll slide this over the end. Pull this right down to the bottom. And that's how it's gonna hang. If you can see that. That'll run the whole length of your hammock. Let's get this all untwisted to make sure that we're not Getting into a mess here. There's our pouch. Pouch is hanging in the right direction. We'll take off this other carabiner. Set that guy aside. Get this all untwisted. There we go. And there's our other one. Now, in this case, in this case, where's our line? This is, our, this is our base camp right here, this little black line. Now, before we get anywhere further, what I do wanna do is I wanna prepare to get this guy set up. This is our, our, our it's like a peak loft. Now, this is gonna be some storage for our, uh, for our hammock. So while we're getting this on, it's got this funny little, little connector here that's gonna, it's like a cord lock that's gonna hold on to your line. Now, we're gonna need to get this guy on. Uh, which way do we go? Let's do it this way. We're gonna to need to get this little guy on um, before we attach the hammock, uh, ha attach the hammock to the other side. So basically what we'll do is I'll squeeze these guys together, we'll pass the cord through, slide it down, and then we're, on, we're off to the races. Now basically what I've decided to do is I'm just gonna tie a quick little slip knot. So basically, we'll put that through there Something that's going to be easy to untie in case we need to make adjustments. And then once that's on, we'll just do another half hitch. And that's it. That should hold quite nicely. So, now that we have our, our, our ridge line attached, I'm going to keep all this extra cord here um, only because if I don't find that we have enough ha enough sag, I want to be able to adjust this, uh, either tighten it or loose it, uh, loosen it if we have too much, uh, if, if, if I find it too tight. So what we'll do is we'll just uh, clean this up real quick, the quick little whip. And that'll hang in there just nicely out of the way, won't cause us any problems. Now to finish off this guy, to finish off our peak, our uh, peak loft, you'll see it's got a, um, I don't know, it's like a mitten, a mitten uh, thing. You attach your two mittens together. It's attached to a little bit of a bungee cord, then it clicks onto here. Now basically what we'll do 
is we'll come out of the ridge line and just click it to the whoop, to the whoopee slime. And that's it. We'll find the uh, the little loops on the end of the at the end of the hammock. We'll pop this guy open. It's like a little alligator clip that kind of locks. This is the best way to put it. So we'll open this guy up. We'll stick the loop stick the loop in his jaws. You can see that, and then lock it down. There's one, and we'll do the other side as well. Open it up. Open up the jaws. Pass the loop through. There we go, and lock it down. So, so now, the hammock is only slightly bigger than what it was before, but we have our suspension, everything attached to that, plus uh, some new storage and a ridge line popped into there with our tarp. That's pretty much uh, that's pretty much a sleep system, and at this time of year, I could probably go to sleep with just that. All right, so here we are. Outside, just at a local park, somewhere close. But I got two suitable, I got a whole bunch of suitable trees here, really, that I could hang from. But uh, we're gonna use this guy here, and this guy right over here. And uh, we're just gonna set it up, see how it goes. And um, we'll see how those modifications worked out, if they worked out at all. And we'll just uh, hang out here for a little bit and uh, have a little bit of lunch. So, let's get the old roux out. Alrighty, folks, I got the hammock set up here behind me. Um, it took some fiddling, fiddling and messing around. I originally tried uh, using these uh, these little cheapy, cheapy homemade uh, webbing straps that I just kind of whipped together with a knot. Uh, it should have worked, um, but the, whatever this material is, uh, it was something I ordered off of uh, from China. So it was like some polyester uh, or maybe nylon. I, I'm not even sure. They wrote like polyester nylon webbing. So I don't even think they know, but uh, point is, uh, this stuff stretched. I got into it, and I just kept going down, 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 down. Now, if that was this, if that was the um, the ridge line, I should have been going up if the ridge line was breaking or stretching, but uh, that was not the case. So this was a no-go. So I went back to the original straps. We're going to use those, and uh, we'll swing and hang out there. See how it works out. All right, so we're in the hammock. We're swinging in the breeze, enjoying ourselves. We've got the ridge line to help us get up and down if we need to. I got clearance from the ground. Don't have to worry about my butt dragging around anywhere, even though it did just before uh, with those uh, other stupid straps. But um, I think uh, in the future, I'll end up hanging this side uh, with, with the peak uh, the peak shelf uh, above my head. I got it in the opposite way just because I had the camera there already, but um, I think it's a, it's best benefit is when it's right up at, up at your uh, your head. But uh, I could probably put one on each side and keep uh, my camera gear and all kinds of stuff on one side and all the, uh, all the knickknacks and doodads that I need right away at my feet, uh, at, my, at my grasp. Or even just um, got myself one of those uh, uh, ridge line organizers. That would work out just fine too, I think. But it's nice having storage. Real nice. Yep. That'll work just fine. Keeping all my stuff safe and secure all right let's set up the tarp sorry right, guys we're just whipping through this setup here uh, but in the future I will be doing a review on this tarp we'll do a complete setup then how to type thing but for right now I really just want to get this up so we can have a look at the modifications we did to the um, guidelines the uh, the guy outs also come with this funny little this funny little plastic piece now it'll pull out to where you where you want to have it attached and then you can lock it in it's got these little teeth inside I'll see if I can get a close-up for you uh, later but it'll hold the loop instead of having to tie uh, um, top line hitches but get it straightened out all the way and tuck that in Alrighty guys, we've got the uh, we've got the uh, hammock set up. Everything's looking pretty good. We've got the tarp set up. 
We have all of our ridge lines staked out to the ground. The bungee cord's actually holding it really nicely. Don't have to worry about it uh, uh, getting too slack or anything like that. The bungee cord's gonna keep the, the hammock uh, guy out tight all the time. Um, we've got plenty of room. Here, I'm gonna bring you over there. There's no way we're gonna get any rain or anything on us from this side. We're pretty good. <coughs> On the opposite side, I have tons of room. Um, I did end up putting this up a little bit crooked. Uh, it's not the end of the world. It, it'll be fine like this. Um, and actually, if you've got if you've got enough room in here, you're able to uh, store gear and all kinds of things down at the end uh, and under under your hammock on the, on one side. I still have all the room on the other side and uh, not have to worry at all. So that works out pretty nice. Um, I'm gonna hop in there, show you what it looks like, and uh, you tell me what you think. There you have it guys, more than enough room to swing around in here, a little bit of shade, out of the sun, no problem. Now, if you could see in here, there's tons of room. I feel like I've got room all the way around me, no problem at all. Uh, I could probably do to move the hammock a little bit in that direction, which would be probably uh, the best case scenario uh, to make sure I don't get wet, but that's just all a setup issue. You want to make sure that you're you're evenly placed under your under your uh, your tarp, and that will be that. One of the benefits of having this guy here, you could really, if you wanted to, tuck this guy back and it's out of your way. But if you end up getting hungry, pop yourself out a bag of chips and you're in business. Let's give you a quick walk around here. And you can see right here, the bungee's got a little loose. You see here, this part's loose, but the bungee's still holding tension. So we're still good, we don't have to adjust anything yet, or at all. But I'm wondering if it wouldn't have been better to take the bungees and tie them right up under here, under that, under that loop where we attach it to the, uh, to the tarp. That might've been actually better, but who knows. Anyway. Sorry guys, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take that tarp off because I'm not really needing it today and uh, I definitely will uh, will be hanging out here for a little bit enjoying the view that I got back here I don't know if you can see that or not I'm going to enjoy that view back there and uh, have my sandwich for dinner Catch you in a minute I did pick up some, uh, some Kevlar rope I'm going to be switching it out for the for the 550. Uh, the Kevlar isn't going to stretch at all, so it's going to hold the uh, it's going to hold the angle uh, much better than this will. So we're going to swap that out. But I think for now, uh, I've got the length down pretty good to where I like it. the The peak shelf is pretty good. I'm happy with that too. Got my my drinks and everything right at hand. It's really easy to get to. I 
I think with a ridgeline organizer, this guy will be just about perfect. I don't have to worry about anything falling out of there now. And when I'm getting ready to go to bed, I can just tuck that up into the back and I've got more than enough room. Sorry guys, I just wanted to show you a quick, uh, some quick and easy mods to do uh, to your, your hammock gear. And uh, I hope in the future, if you're thinking about getting into uh, hammock camping, and this is the first time you're ever you're really looking around, uh, the one thing I do suggest is you spend some time and really do a uh, do uh, do some research on what you're going to need, what your needs are going to be, uh, how how easy things are going to be to set up for you, and. Um, you know, and price point. Uh, there's a lot of big box, uh, big box stores out there that are um, selling these hammocks that probably aren't worth uh, the big bucks. And there's uh, other companies uh, like Hemlock, Hemlock Mountain Outdoors that are selling a real quality product at a really good price. So, just that's just a few words I wanted to say. But anyway, thanks a lot for watching. You guys get out and explore. I'll see you in the next one. Oh man, if you made it this far, you're a sucker for punishment. Well. I know these indoor videos can be kind of boring, but uh, hopefully these mods will help some of you guys get the perfect hang. So uh, I'm going to attach a couple of videos here of my present and past hammocks uh, in action. Hope you guys enjoy. Thanks again for watching. And if you haven't already, like, share and subscribe.